Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining Mandy and myself, Suzanne, for one of our live Q&As here on the Dice Tower. It is always, it's been a while, Mandy, actually, hasn't it been? <laughs> I know. We said we try and do these once a month. It's, it's, it's a little beyond that, but we're here now. Month-ish, month-ish. <laughs> but uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, Mandy, it's been a little while since we've had a chance to catch up too. So life's been busy, something like that. So I don't know. Maybe the Q&A will just be you and me <laughs> queuing right. and aim to each other and, you know, forget, forget the chat. Yay! I'm so kidding. We have confirmation from Gesenja at Fox that we can see and hear you both clearly. An auspicious start to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I was joking about ignoring the chat because our chat is the absolute best. We love uh, all the great conversations that happen just within the chat themselves. But certainly if you have any questions for Mandy or myself about Gamma or Breakout Con or games or uh, I don't know, any pie. The pie, pie? pie is always something or food in general, I've been told. Apparently we talk about food a lot. <laughs> so I don't know what they're talking about. There's no merit in that. What? what? <laughs> we never talk about about food on our podcast and in our Q&A ever. I mean, <laughs> other than right now. But this doesn't count about talking about food, food, because we're talking about talking about food. And that's totally different. So there you that's go. Good. But I see some familiar faces in the chat. So thank you to, you know, those who are continually supporting us and being in the chat. And I see that Be Bold Games is in the chat. So that's Evo, if you don't all know, and supporting us as always. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and and actually, uh, Brittany is Be Bold Games is asking what pie pairs best with Caverna. <laughs> this is a very intense conversation, and I do have a prepared PowerPoint, but I'm realizing that I don't want to take the entire Q and A time for that. So I will just summarize and say macadamia nut pie. Now that may come out of left field. No. Trust me. Trust me. It doesn't because, okay, so Caverna, one of my favorite games, it is a crunchier type game. So I feel a pie with texture is absolutely warranted in this circumstance. I would have to agree with you. <laughs> Good <choice>. uh, <laughs> So thanks, Brittany, for that question. Uh, Ross is asking on Restoration Games, which uh, I think is probably asking because Ross must be aware that I... Uh, I freelance, I, I help support restoration games on the side a little bit. And uh, so I just want to kind of disclaim that too. So I don't come across like I'm a total shell, even though I'm a total shell, no, but no. I'm a genuine shell because I really love restoration games. Did we announce anything other than Fireball Island or Dinosaur Tea Party at Gamma? And no, we did not announce anything else. Uh, we're really focused on Dinosaur Tea Party, which is coming out Gen Con. And of course, Fireball Island, the Kickstarter launches April 3rd. I am not in a panic at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Uh, but that is that is all we have made public at this point. But rest assured, we have a lot of things in the works. We had some really good meetings at Gamma about things that I can't talk about yet, but uh, nothing else announced. So thanks for asking, Ross. Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Oh, my gosh. I want to know. Oh, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait till everything's all set up. And then I can ask my questions about Fireball Island, etc. <laughs> so Roman Yunkers in the chat asking Suzanne Mandy, what is the strangest location each of you has played a board game? Oh, strangest location. I got to think about that. Do you have any off the top of your head? Like, I, I like... don't know. I mean, I've played on an airplane. Yeah, I've done that. I've played on a train. I've played on a ferry boat. Mm -hmm. So I guess on the water, maybe. Does that count as being strange? I've played in a bathroom. Oh, no, good gravy. <laughs> oh my. Well, now wait. If we're talking about app games, let's... No, no, no. Like an let's actual game. Now, you know, usually it's like, oh, gross. Like no one's going to play in the bathroom. But if there's like a nice clean counter there and it's a nice bathroom and you're waiting, come on. Why you're, not? You're waiting for what in the bathroom, Mandy? What I am highly impatient in line. So if I can just pull out a little, you know, rolly roll game or something or whatever. <laughs> I love these Q&As because I always learn about you, Mandy. And this I'm is one that's going to go in the record books. <laughs> I never said I wasn't odd. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah, I mean, I'd be interested, actually, I think that's a fun question for the chat too. chat. If you've had any fun places or unique places that you've gotten to play a board game, let us know. I want to see what you all have been doing too. Yes, absolutely. So I see something here about Oh my gosh, this is going to drive me crazy. I just saw it. Oh, here we go. Empires of the Void 2. And this is from Joshua. Suzanne, have you had a chance to play it yet? So I spoke about it on the podcast. I think it was a few episodes back about my playthrough. And I played, I've played it a few times since then. So I've played it with five. I've played, or start with five. I think it's five. Well, we play with full player count. One, two. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. I had to think about that for a second. So that was fine. And then I played with less players. I still think I like it with more, although there are some people saying that they like it with less players. I just like the interaction. It does take a bit longer, but it's not, it's not a super difficult game. So it has that exploration and space a lot aspect of pieces. to it. Yes, it does. Mind you, less than others that I've played. Um, the setup is not too bad. But once you get through the rules, it's really not that difficult. And it's a really, you can obviously see that it's a Ryan Luckett game, like absolutely 100%. So it's beautiful. I love the way it looks. You've got the coins. I do feel that you feel like you're shorted on some of the coins, the the metal coins. Oh, interesting. So it like you, don't have you do have enough. It just feels like you might not. I'm not sure. So we were okay, but I know some other people were worried about something like that. But other than that, I still enjoyed the game. I know I had a couple friends who didn't enjoy it, but they didn't enjoy that type of game to begin with. So this didn't change their mind. Sure. And yeah. I mean, you know, it's a space game and we all know how you feel about space games, Mandy. Absolutely hate all space games. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't had a chance to play. I'm still looking forward to it. It's actually sitting right over there. Um, it's a mammoth heavy game and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I saw it was at a convention in February and actually people played my copy of the game. I haven't <laughs> played my own copy of the game, but... I'm 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 looking forward to it. It looked massive on the table, which was cool. Yeah, no, it's great. So I mean, I don't know if you have Ryan Lockett games. I think you will like to have this type of game. Yeah, yeah. so definitely want to try. So Magdiel, Magdal, I apologize, Escobar in the chat. In the chat, I apologize if I mis uh, mispronounce your name. Asks which one of us is the most competitive. Oh, I know the answer to that, and it's not I me. I do too. It, <laughs> it's you. Wow! Wow! <laughs> no, I am not competitive at all. I don't even know. It is you, 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 you. Do we not remember that game of Majesty? <laughs> yeah. Look, oh. I play the game, but I mean, like, look. If I, I mean, I have a twenty-seven percent win rate according to BG stats. I am. Mm. <laughs> yeah so my pretension is very low and, and there was <laughs> like you've never stabbed me in the back in a game i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> i really don't actually my memory's so short what game well, fair enough okay <laughs> <laughs> well but there you I, go I, I, that's know, definitive. We're, we're both saying each other so so if you see us and play a game with us then you'll be able to determine that <laughs> and, and i mean to be real i think it really just comes down to that we both play hard, but we're not going to get upset if we lose. No. And we're not going to, you know, flip the table. Well, yeah. maybe I would. Okay, maybe <laughs> it's me. But, you know, we're, we're, we're both pretty chill about that kind yeah. of thing. I think we just have fun with it. I have fun. A lot of my friends apparently say I have more strategy than I think I do because I go in and I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, do something. They're like, you just totally prevented me from doing this move. I'm like, oh, did I? Sorry. Oops. I didn't do it on purpose. It just subconsciously happened. See? So does that count? Mm. What uh, I can tell you is Mandy likes her little bits and pieces in neat orderly rows, and it's super fun to knock them over after no. she's tied them all up. <laughs> yes, that video haunts me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kent is asking if we've played Rising Sun. I have not. I have seen everybody else play it. I have seen the mats and the pieces. I've even talked to Eric about it. And I have not played it yet. Yeah, and this is one that I have not either. And this is maybe one of my Kickstarter regrets. I did not back it. Because I remember hearing that Eric had said that his inspiration for Blood Rage was Risk. And his okay. inspiration for Rising Sun was Diplomacy. And honestly, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, mm, I'm out. I like that. No, diplomacy is not my game. I this is not diplomatic. Um, and so I actually chose not to back it. And but now everybody I know, both locally and a bunch of my friends online, are loving it. And so now I'm kind of going, uh, wish I backed it. Everyone's telling me the problem with 
Rising Sun for me is the three player minimum uh, player count. I, I I have a problem back in games that are minimum three players. As soon as I see that, I'm like, no, I can't because I just, I never, I can't guarantee it's going to hit the table. At least two gives me some leeway. Three, it's now like I'm dedicated to having to play with a minimum of three. And then is it even good at three or do I actually need four or five? You know sure. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've been hearing four is the magic number. I could be wrong. Someone can correct me if um, they've played it, but I've heard four is is where it's at to play. Hmm. So I, I have, I do have, thankfully in my, you know, play groups and stuff like that, we have a number of copies between the different individuals. So I know I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to the table soon. Th- thanks to them for sure. Yeah, me too. And this is a call out to my friends who have it. If you're listening, Hello. hint, hint, elbow, Let's elbow. Play it. <laughs> Janary Howell or Jenry Howell is asking if we could time travel, where would we go? Oh, all right. So the big, the the first big question is: Are you a past person or a future person, Mandy? Well, if you look at my hair, mm. I'm sort of in the past, but that has its own thing. I like the style of the past. I'm okay with not the other stuff. So I'm like maybe, but then I don't want to go to the future because I'm like, oh, what if it's really bad and. I don't, I don't know. The unknown freaks me out a little bit. Almost the past, it's like I've seen what happened, but then it's at the same time you can't change it. Wow, I am the worst person to ask this question to. Because so, <laughs> I literally could find something random about any of them. But I guess, oh, maybe the future. I would t- try and travel to maybe, maybe closer to, now do they want a place or a time in my life? They just said, where would you go? I mean, but when, where, whatever. You interpret the question how you want to, Mandy. Oh, yeah. Well, as we can see, that's not panning out very well. But (laughs) I would time travel to, I don't know, some kind of like alternate universe where I could see myself as something else. Do you know what I mean? So, Like like, an actuary? (laughs) So like me right now, I could be, you know, in a band playing bongo drums or I could be a scientist or I could be, do you know what I mean? Or just some. You could be all that (laughs) I could be that one person, but I would love to see somewhere like some other alter universe, what I would be like. So seeing mm. myself, but as something different. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. What about you? Oh, I, I'm a future girl. I would, I would mm. travel to the future. Uh, no, like I don't, I'm not a big fan of the unknown. And right. so going to the future and getting a hint of what's to come. I'm all about that. <laughs> That's scary, but I get it. Uh, let's see. Brad is asking, what are the games that started our dives into designer ga- the designer games hobby? Um, oh, hold on. I was Do reading I the know yours. Oh, yeah. So no, Brad's no. asking what, what got us into the hobby, basically. And I don't I don't know if I remember what yours were. Um, ooh. so I actually started playing a lot of, you know, the basic games that everyone plays, you know, when they're younger and whatnot. Um, you know, so chess, checkers, things like that. I played a lot of Mahjong. Uh, when I was younger, I know that's so random. Um, and that kind of was my foray into it because for us, gaming was uh, like family time. Gaming was something that like we all got together and do uh, to do together and um, as a group and to keep us kind of joined. Um, believe it or not, catchphrase was super popular in my house. Um, I, I play games like Let's Make a Deal, The Addams Family. Oh my gosh. I was so obsessed with The Addams Family and that game. I would play it by myself. And there was no solo mode. I would just play (laughs) it by myself. I love that. So I see you as a Morticia Adams fan for sure. I loved it. So, I mean, those kinds of games kind of got me into the hobby. And then, you know, you jump into, you know, your Carcassonne and things like that. But believe it or not, it was like those really old, old games. But what I used to do is I would use to make the games work for the way that I wanted it to work. So that's, that's cool. Um, I've, I've talked about this a little bit, so I'll just be pretty brief. I, uh, always been a gamer, played a lot of classic games, you know, similar, Mandy, you're talking about like kind of classic traditional games in a way, uh, played a lot of like bridge and Euchre and things like that. But then what really got me into the hobby game was magic, the gathering Mm -hmm. and robo rally and, uh, Quarto. So, oh, uh, really? the little like, oh, and I, to this day, I still love that game. I'm also very good at it. I'm just saying, if anybody oh. wants to bring it, I'm ready for you. I have to admit, Risk almost turned me off because my brothers were so mean to me playing that game. Oh, wow. They were so, ugh. they were just, I think they wanted to destroy me. So I was like, wow, you never want to see me play a board game again. So yeah, Risk has a special place in my heart. <laughs> that's, that's great. More power to you, sister. 
<laughs> I'm going to jump back. Someone asked, and yes, nope. I know this is about board games, but I'm going to answer it. So someone asked about my hair color. It's oh. just a silver. So just, um, it's a salon. My friend's a hairstylist. So she creates this fabulousness. So there you go. So I don't know where the question went. So. No, yeah. <laughs> but there you go. And Thonda. Uh, and then as I'm talking to you, I see <laughs> Be Bold Games. Mandy, professional bathroom board gamer. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That, is, totally that is a new one. I cannot I cannot claim that one for sure. <laughs> uh, let's and, see. Oh, go oh, ahead. Did you have one? Yeah, Joshua's coming back to Empires, which he enjoyed, but wanted to know if we're gonna be at any more oh localish cons soon. So I'm assuming you live in Ottawa or Toronto or in that area. Um, I don't think we've got anything scheduled for Canada. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Potentially at Comic-Con, I might be there for the last day because we're going to Simon Expo that weekend. Um, but I think that's it until next year. But if you're at any of the cons, Origins, Gen Con, any of the big ones, we'll all be there. Um, but yeah, if there's anything that you can suggest to me in Canada, I'm more than happy to check it out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the game guy is asking what theme have we never seen or, and would like to see happen in a board game and, and game guys saying that they like HD Wells time machine. I think time travel games are really tough to do thematically. I was going to say that would be hard. Um, so, I mean, that may be why it hasn't <laughs> happened because, but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of cartoons and so, uh, the the one I, I I really like Avatar, uh, the Last Airbender. And now we have Legend of Korra from IDW, which is in the same universe. I and they did a card game for Avatar, but um, and I really love Steven Universe. But the one like the throwback one, I'd love to see. Stick with me, the Snorks. <laughs> now come on, the Smurfs Wait. underwater, the Snorks. <laughs> and, come on, who doesn't remember the Snorks? I what are you laughing that, at, girl? Because when you said that, and I was like, oh, wrong thing. I was thinking of anybody who's Canadian on here, they'll know. The raccoons. What? <laughs> These are not raccoons. No, there's a show called The Raccoons, and they have characters called, you've never heard of Cyril Sneer, and they have these, like, snorty like <laughs> I... I know. I, it's just, I was like, oh, shoot, wrong thing. Anyway, I digress. Anybody who's Canadian will 100% know what I'm talking about. Is this like the, the littlest hobo show that you told me about? Like, That's a whole something else. <laughs> oh, my good gravy. So what about you, Mandy? What about a game theme or something that you would like to see? Oh, goodness. I just, hmm. It's so hard because I love the whole retro vibe theme, but I'm thinking of how could this be made differently like we've seen food chain magnet has that kind of art and mm -hmm. the kind of theme of you know your business with 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 that kind of retro vibe to it mm -hmm. i haven't really pinpointed it but i would love to see something that's done with that retro vibe but maybe touches on some yes i'm gonna say it touches on some other topics that kind of potentially may have you know happened back then but in a positive like kind of doing it in a positive way i don't know like an educational kind of fashion yeah, maybe that's the teacher part of me coming out but something kind of Something along those lines. I haven't pinpointed an exact thing, but yeah, I don't know. Never say never. Stranger things have happened in games. There's a lot of um, game design is just getting so fascinating and rich and varied. I I hold out hope for, for lots of good things in gaming still. Right. Exactly. So we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe some of these odd suggestions that I'm coming up with may come to fruition. So <laughs> There's two questions in a row here about Kickstarter. So oh. uh, let's start with with this quicker one. Ross Updike is asking, are we kickstarting Dulasaur Island and the Totally Liquid expansion for Dinosaur Island? I am actually backing the expansion. So not the two players, just because I don't get two players uh, to the table as much, but I am backing the expansion because I really like dinosaur island and it's being i'm teaching it quite a lot so it's good and we did a playthrough actually a live playthrough on the dice tower of it so definitely getting the expansion what about you i'm i'm getting it all ah, i'm getting it all i'm getting are. it all i love dinosaur island <laughs> i i don't get a ton of two player like like similar two player games can be challenging sometimes of course but i love 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 two player games i just think that the player limitation allows for some really fine tuning and balancing of the game so i find two player games tend to be good ones tend to be just yeah. on point so yeah i'm i'm in on that one for sure of course and wait guess who's in the chat i have no idea 
Eric Summer. Oh my goodness, I'm so far behind in the chat. <laughs> Says, hey you two, editing episode 548 right now. Anything you want to tease for 549? <laughs> I'm like, deer in headlights. Uh... Are we doing an episode 549? Yeah. I... Next one. Okay, I... well, let's see. I think the next one we're going to be doing some, we're going to be answering questions from listeners. Oh, hint, hint. Susanna Mandy at gmail.com. Mandy with an I. Bring us your questions. We need questions. And uh, yeah. And then our usual, I think that's it. Nothing else major. Thanks for stopping in, Eric. Uh, Eric, so nice. I know. Too bad you can like pop on. For for those of you in the chat that, you know, listen to the podcast and Eric is as awesome of a person as he seems like on the show. 100%. And even better. He's just the best person in so many ways. And I'm the biggest fan of Eric Summer. So oh, me it's, too. So it's such a true <gasps> I thing. I think we should get like Eric Summer shirt. Sure. <gasps> I would do that. I would do that. Why? Well, you? Know, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start planning. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Javi was asking, "What game are we most glad?" That was a really hu- most. That's not even in my pitch range. Uh, most glad that we we've backed on Kickstarter, and that's a tough one because I've backed. Let's 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 uh kickstarter here. Let, I I've backed a lot of games and not all of them have been uh uh winners or stuck 360 Oh geez, that's embarrassing. I'm at I'm at 360 games backed now. Um I've been really happy with backing um Red Raven games, you know, you get the deluxe edition that have all the fancy bits. And I'm just a big fan of, of Ryan Lockett games uh, in general. So I think that when I think about Instabax, it's just Red Raven games, put something on Kickstarter. I don't care what it is at this point. I just have so much trust and um, affection for that publisher. I'm just, I'm in. Yeah. No, always, always a good, a good thing from them. Always, I find their campaigns run really well and their game quality is excellent. So that's always a bonus. And I usually guarantee that's going to be a pretty decent game. So would that be your response? Well, and you know, the only random one, I guess, is if you can see behind me, <laughs> I have like these like pieces of stuff, uh, art, I guess, photographs. And I always back the board gaming calendar by Scott King. Okay. Uh, and it's, He's a professional photographer. He does a lot of photography for board game publishers directly. And he takes these amazing photographs of all the board games we love. And then you can pick and choose them and customize your calendar and add your own holidays and things like that. I back that every year. And I I totally love it. And then, you know, when you're done with the calendar, you can tear it apart and you got art. So, ta-da. That's awesome. That's How about you? Good. I think right now I was happy to have backed Dinosaur Island. Now, I've only backed... 50 some odd projects so not as many as you and overall they've been pretty good but i would say dinosaur island was one that i've been i think it's probably the one i've played the most hmm. i've taught it a lot played it the most and i know for a while it wasn't available people it was selling for like crazy amounts of money online and i'm like hey i'm really glad that i grabbed that while i could but i mean it's great that it's coming out for other people to to able to be able to get a copy but that would be the one i think right now for me that's a great one yeah um Let's see here. And I know we're we're way behind in the chat. I'm way behind in the chat, but so my apologies on that one. But um Jeff Rod Rodmacher, Rodemacher, Rodemacher. Jeff. Rod- well, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, and I feel really bad about that. So I'm 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 just putting it out there. Jeff uh Jeff edits the podcast episodes that Mandy and I record, and it's a huge help because you know, with all the transitions and music that's that's all jeff so thank you jeff but jeff is asking if we've ever kickstarted something that we intend to flip and i can unequivocally say no i have never done that that is too much effort getting to the post office is the hardest thing in the world for me to do so there's no way i would ever do that because i ain't got time for that (laughs) nobody's got time for that So no, I don't either. Honestly, it's the same thing. Going to the post office, it's close, but it's a pain. I, I, I just, for me, it's like I bag it for me and that's the end of it. If I end up not liking it, that's a whole other story. But no, but I see a lot of people do it. I just, I just don't have the time <laughs> to be honest. And you know, Mandy, I'm looking in this chat. I'm seeing a few people asking about your favorite thing. Oh no, You're what? top 100. <laughs> dun, dun, I, dun. I thought you all forgot about that. <laughs> I've actually started working on it. 
geez, you don't realize how much, I mean, I always know how much work goes into videos, but oh, top 100 is, is a lot. So I've started the scripting part. So my list is done of the games, my top 100. Now I'm hard to do listing. It's hard for me to do those sorts of things because I'm like, this is my top 100 right now. That may change in a year or so. It happens. But for now, it's done. I started scripting. I've scripted the first little bit and I still have a little bit more to go and then I can start filming and there's a lot to happen. So crossing our fingers, I don't want to give any deadlines here, but within the next few months and it could be before that. I just, you know, don't want to make any promises, but it's happening. <laughs> Okay, I'll relieve the pressure off of you a little bit. Uh, actually, Rebecca Lightbody, I'm, I apologize if I've missed some of the questions. It's, the chat moves very quickly. Y'all are chatty and I love it. Um, Rebecca Lightbody asks a great question. What advice can you give to a shy person going to cons and trying to game with new people? I I love that question. And I think that's such an important question to ask. Uh, Mandy, do you have any thoughts that you wanted to share first? It's... It's hard. I know for myself, people don't think of me as shy, but honestly, I have to really push myself to, you know, get in there and, and kind of say, Hey, do you want to play this game? Or sometimes if you pull out a game, you know, people are more likely to come out and say and see, you know, Oh, like, would you like to play? Or, you know, they have the signs when you go to the cons to help gather people to come over to help you play a game. Sometimes it's just a good way to introduce and just, you know, someone's playing a game. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about this game? And I understand that's hard for people, but you figure you can just use the focus of the games as as a way to kind of get more comfortable. Even if you don't necessarily play that game, it's just a nice way to work your way up. But I always carry little games in my bag. So super, super quick games. So if you're really unsure about, you know, the circumstance or uncomfortable, if you just pull out a really quick, light game and just, you know, hey, would you like to play this and see how it goes? What about you? I think that's great, great tips. Um, I always recommend use the convention organization to your benefit. So the two things that I think about, first of all, a lot of conventions have signage now that you can take uh, that say teacher wanted or exactly. players wanted. Use those. Those are people put those up because they want that. They either want players or they want a teacher and, and take advantage of that because that's their invitation. It may be anonymous, but it's still that invitation. So if you see a player's wanted sign up around a game that you're interested in, or if you see a teacher's wanted sign that you feel confident that you can teach that game, bolster your, you know, gather your bravery and, and go for it because that, that is an invitation. Um, and then a lot of conventions, even small ones, have scheduled games, organized games uh, that people know that they want to play a specific game and they put it out in the open and then you can sign up for a spot, a seat at that game. If the, if the conventions you're going to have that available, those kind of organized games, do it. Sign up for it because find games that you're interested in and then just go because you're sitting at a table. You're guaranteed to meet new people. Hopefully you'll enjoy the game. Hopefully you'll enjoy the people. Um, but whenever you're meeting new people, there's, you know, sometimes you click, sometimes you don't. But right. uh, that puts some structure around it to maybe help with a little bit of that shyness, right? Because everybody is in the same boat in that case. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good tips, I think, overall. And oh, the game guy, what do you recommend in a good themed game? Uh, sorry, a good themed game for married couple at church board game night. Hmm. I mean, I go to church, so sometimes we have game nights. It's not all the time. Uh, paperback is one that I quite enjoy and I like to teach people. And it's really nice for that sort of setting. And I think you can play it with any type of group, couples or groups. And I think that works really well. I'm trying to think what else. What else have you played? Would you think would be like a nice all round good theme game that can be played? It, it's interesting. You know, I always think back to um, a teacher that is a board gamer that was talking about the games that she brings to her game club at school for her mm -hmm. students. And I know that that's not the same as a church, but one thing that kind of stood out to me was that uh, she was surprised at how well abstractly themed games went over. You'd expect the kids to really be into, you know, the monster theme or the zombie theme or whatever. And, and they did, they loved the games or whatever, but they responded surprisingly well to games like Blockus mm -hmm. or Quirkle. Um, that you might not instantly think of. And so, you know, I think games like Blockus or Quirkle are great. I think games like Number Nine that are themeless, they're vaguely abstract, but they're rules light, but gameplay yeah. deep can work quite well um, in, in that situation. Because a lot of these games, 
seamless as they may be, they kind of trigger memories that you might have of playing checkers or purchasing or things, you know, in the background and, and kind of um, make that simpler to pick up on or cleaner to pick up on. So uh, I always encourage people to consider give give some love to the abstract yeah, when so you think about like, introducing your players. I had mentioned, I don't, I lost it in the chat here. Oh, Jeff had mentioned Azul, which is right. I actually did play that one as well. That one went over really well. Uh, someone else mentioned Caverna, Cave versus Cave, and Patchwork. And Patchwork I have done as well. Good for couples, honestly, being a two-player game. But those are all really, really good suggestions as well. We have some other ones in here, code names. I've never played Tumble and Dice. I do have Teach You. I think it would just depend too on, on the group and what types of games you think that they would absolutely enjoy. you'll know your friends and your community the best yeah exactly oh my goodness this chat's like moving along here Woo! all right oh wow i see a lot of pie okay moving on. <laughs> oh chris rowan's asking thoughts on loop inc have you ever played loop inc it's a time it's, travel game. Yeah, I've seen it. I've heard mixed things about it. I have not played it, but I don't own it. Um, I actually, I don't think I know anybody who owns it. Um, I heard mixed results. Do you have you played it? Do you own it? Yeah, I, I've played it, and I actually it's in my collection, and I enjoy it. I think it's, um, it it has a little bit of the, the time travel theme comes in a little bit, not super heavy, because but you play multiple rounds, uh, time loops in the game. Uh, I like it well enough that I have it in my collection and and I think it's 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 a, a nice game. So, you know, if that kind of theme intrigues you, I think I think Loop Inc. does a really good job. I also think Time Stories does a good job of the whole time travel thing, if that's where the question came from. But time stories can be very divisive amongst gamers. Either you kind of love it or you hate it. I love it, but you know, not everybody does. Oh, I liked it. I was just I was the only one, I wouldn't want to give anything away, but there was a particular part of the game where I said, no, we should do this. And the rest of my group was like, no, we should do this. I'm like, I am telling you, no, no, no. They're like, yes, yes, yes. So the consensus was to go that way. And well, it did not end well. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not hanging on to it at all. At all. Uh, <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Timbo Canada is saying, any tips for battling a head cold? Watching you trying to fight headache. I, they must mean <laughs> they're trying to fight a headache while watching us. I had to read that twice because I was like, like watching you trying to fight. Sure. If or, that was. <laughs> are we trying to fight and it's a headache? Right. It could be I'm... many. I'm not sure. But we're going to go with maybe the first. <laughs> I'm going to go with the first interpretation, you know, <laughs> for sure. I just wanted to say, sorry that you have a headache. That I'm stinks. Sorry. Misery. Vitamin C. You can never have too much vitamin hot C. Hot compress. I'm telling you, turn off the lights, hot compress. It feels amazing. <laughs> if, it's a head one, if it's really. Uh, and as a reminder, we are not medical professionals. All no. of our medical advice should not be followed Same without either. consultation with your doctor. <laughs> uh, oh, Trevin Taylor is just saying Fox in the Forest arrived in their mail awesome that game, game is rad enjoy very very good it was on my top 10 games of 2017 i enjoy it and eric is saying snorks are awesome <laughs> you're awesome, awesome eric and you're right about the snorks they were awesome they are awesome thank and you and i have to say someone else uh, who was it somebody else mentioned raccoons was very popular in the uk thank you thank you thank you <laughs> and julia say littlest hobo is a canadian treasure <laughs> Yes. No argument. I, I, I just had not, as an American, I was unfamiliar with your crime fighting, problem solving <laughs> German shepherd called the Littlest Hobo. It's I like apologize. A Lassie MacGyver. I don't even. It was like a, just a mix, but in this like awesome dog. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. Yeah. Oh, I see a question that I need to answer because it's. Funny, the story I have. So Rebecca's okay. asking, uh, what are our experiences with exit room style games? Oh. Yeah, so I have some and I'm trying to get through them. The first one I played, we decided to open it at two o'clock in the morning. And yeah, that did not. I literally was doing this. Oh, the whole time yeah. playing it. My eyes just couldn't open. Something that should have taken like 10 minutes to like 45 minutes. So note to self. Do not play these at 2 a.m. in the morning because yeah. once you start, you got to finish. So that aside, I enjoyed the puzzly aspect of it. 
some of them are hard. Mm -hmm. Like I find some of them, and I mean, that's the point, right? So some of the difficulty on them is very difficult. Uh, I like the fact that in our team, certain people were good at certain things. Other people were good at other things. So that was really nice. So nobody felt, you know, left out. So I thought that was really cool, but I haven't played all of them. I've only played a couple. So I'm hoping Mm -hmm. to get through all of them soon. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the genre. I, I just love that this thing has emerged oh, just in the last year or two years. I adore them. I've played the Exit series, Unlock series, and Deckscape series. I haven't played the Escape Room in a Box yet. I own it. I just haven't had a chance to right. play it yet. Um, Exit is my favorite. I think that the destruction, the component destruction actually enables more puzzle types. But um, I... I, I like them all, and uh, although I will say, so Exit's my favorite, and I, I think Unlock and Deckscape kind of tie for a second, okay. but the last Unlock I played, thank God it wasn't the first, because it may have been the last. It was not fun, um, and I, I think this series in general is excellent, but the Nautilus traps, if you have not played Unlock, do not start with the nautilus traps there are two to three puzzles in there that just made us mad and i won't spoil anything but it may even be worth looking in the bgg forums before you play it or while you're playing it when you hit something that just seems off um it was not chris is in the chat saying tony tony pal am i pronouncing that right tony pal oh no tony pal's treasures is is okay. is a good one. The Nautilus traps is the one that I would either avoid or make sure you don't play it as your first unlock because I think it could honestly spoil you on what is otherwise a very nice series. Okay, I haven't tried the unlock. I know Chris, uh, Chris, who I work with, uh, has been mentioning it to me. So one that I could try, and they're reusable, I think, for the most part. Versus the exit ones, which are for the most part, you need to, you know, dispose of them once you're compl- once they're completed because they're you're using them and they've been ripped or torn apart. So. But very cool. All right. What's this here? Oh, he said that Tony Powell frustrated us. Is it Nautilus? Was wasn't too bad. Hill is great for starting. I have no oh, idea what yeah, that the is, house, but. the haunted the the house on the hill or the it is. And Mandy, if have you played uh, you would like this one. It's a horror horror themed one, like a haunted house on the hill. You would like this one. And it was like it's it. a good one. It's a good one. Okay, maybe I'll have to try that one. I've only started with the exit, so I haven't tried the unlocks yet. So we'll see how that goes. Interesting. Okay. So it's interesting. Previn Taylor is saying that they like how the answer to the Kickstarter flip is it's too much work rather than it's unethical. And Kent's asking, how unethical is it to sell a Kickstarter? Mm. that's well, actually really good and it's funny how like see and that's how pure of mind i am that didn't even <laughs> enter my mind that someone would do something like that for unethical reasons but you're 100 percent right i can't get i'm sorry you're so pure of mind is that what you just said i did say that and you think i'm gonna let that fly just unaddressed darling yeah. <laughs> mm. okay <laughs> yeah we'll go with that one we're we're yeah pure mind mandy mm-hmm. okay yeah. so anyway you know, I think that's an interesting statement, just in general, Trevin and Kent. Is it unethical to flip a Kickstarter? I think that's, a, you know, what you're saying is it un- unethical to sell. But I think you're really talking about flipping, purchasing, right. backing with the intent to flip. I don't think it is. Um, I, I the, In the capitalistic world, there's demand, there's, you know, there's, there's, supply and demand and and that's kind of the heart of it you you can it may not be fun for the people that are trying to buy it and it's you know we have to remember that this hobby is a luxury these games are you know they're expensive now i think there's a lot of value in them etc um but if you know people can afford to back at the time and then there are people willing to pay in the aftermarket uh is it unethical? I would I would actually honestly say no, it's not unethical. Is it kind? It's also not kind. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's why my brain didn't go to it's unethical because I, I don't think it's unethical. I just don't, I don't think it's necessarily a community service right. to do that. But, um, you know, so be it. And I think... You know, there's this video out there. There's this this well-known graduation speech. And it's like, this is water. And it's, 
you know, there's what's probable and what's possible. And so when I get into moments of like that, where I'm like, oh, you know, that jerk, he's just flipping it and I don't want to pay $300, you know, whatever. Like, well, is it, is it likely that they're just flipping it? Yeah. But is it possible that, hey, they backed it and then their dog got sick and they need the money to support, you know, their dog's health care and need, you know, that's a way that they can get more money. That's a possibility. And that makes me feel better about it. So I'll choose to think that way about it because I don't know, you know. Um, so that's kind of where I land on that one. I don't know. Mandy, what do you think? No, I have to agree with you. I mean, I don't think it's it's nice. I, uh, I know. Well, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Nice. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, these are how people make their living, right? It's with their games and they sell the games or promote their games through Kickstarter. And this is how they're able to create them, get paid and that sort of thing. But I mean, how are you supposed to now tell someone who's now purchased one of your games and decides to turn around and say, I'm going to sell it for more? They've already done their due diligence by purchasing the game. I'm not saying it's a nice thing they're doing by deciding to A, sell it for an exorbitant amount of money to somebody else who now potentially unwillingly, um, buys it doesn't know or it's like oh you know i really want it it's not available but if i want it i'm gonna have to spend this much money it's not a i i agree with you i don't think it's an ethical i don't think it's a kind thing to do but there's really not you know it's different from scalping because it's about availability of the product right because anybody technically can back it's unless i guess unless it's a campaign where there's only 100 and somebody rushes and backs all 100 in the first minute you know for themselves that would be unethical to me but in general backers, you know, if you can back in the window of the campaign and you'll have fair access, I think that's very different from scalping, like limited seat tickets, so to speak. Exactly. Exactly. And I actually know someone who, um, it's not a personal friend. I just know someone that I've seen that backs games and then all of a sudden they're available for sale and I'm like, Oh, okay. But it's not someone who's buying large quantities and doing that. So yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with you. Uh, Mandy, the other thing I'm seeing in this chat is some curiosity about you singing and knowing <laughs> That we have some history in the Dice Tower of musical episodes. Oh, no. <laughs> I know somebody I can suggest to have a solo now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the reason why the singing is coming up, because there are some people in the chat who uh, watch the Monday nights, which is normally tonight, uh, live streaming. So for those of you who don't know, the live streaming is put on hold right now because our studio space where we uh, record is flooded. So my co-host is where we it's, we do it at his place and it's poor thing is they're excavating his house and all sorts of things. So that's going to be off limits for about a month or so and then we'll be back. But I usually tend to get a little musical throughout these episodes. I've been known to sing tunes from Chicago, you know, potentially. Now, not Chicago, <laughs> the band Chicago, the Broadway musical, but you know, I have a variety of tunes. It's just when the moment hits me. And this is also something that happens when I play games occasionally. So we are very musical table. Someone will say something and all of a sudden it reminds us of a line from a song. And, you know, that song just comes out. We all sing along. I don't know. It's fun. We're musical. Not everybody's into that. I get it. But it helps us enjoy the atmosphere and keep it light. <laughs> uh, Daniel Cheston is asking if we have any Grail games that we have yet to acquire. Ugh, yes. I would imagine, yeah. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been collecting games not quite as long as I have, right? No, no, so, you've definitely yeah. been doing it much longer than I have. That's Randy's way of saying I'm really old. <laughs> I said no such thing. You took it there. You went there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, my number one growl game is the limited edition of Kalis. Kalis is one of my all-time favorite games. I adore that game still. Um, and there was a very limited print run of this one that has alternate art, and it's just stunning. Oh. And someday I'll save up the money. It's it's like $200, $250 to get a copy of it now. And I'm like, that's someday. Awesome. But yeah, that's that's definitely pretty high on my growl game list. Oh, wow. That's yeah, I still haven't played it. So this is one that I need to play because you had mentioned it, you know, to um... Oh, we're gonna next convention that we can get a copy to I'm I'm teaching it to for sure. Okay, that is on the list. And then also I'm throwing it out there. So I have a copy someone was kind enough to give me a copy of pret a -Porter. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. So because I heard they were changing the theme potentially to more of like a video game type theme. And I was, I was thrilled with the fashion uh, type theme in this type of game. And I said, that's really cool. And I know a lot of people that really enjoy it. So that is sitting my shelf unplayed, but I'm also trying to track down Macau. 
Oh, yeah. Macau is actually on my list, too. That's it so is. funny. Yeah, oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a yeah. great game. I love it. Ugh, it's all about the wind rose. <sighs> I just want it. And it's a Feld. And you know how I feel about yeah, my Feld. You, you have feelings about Feld. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, that's nice. See, people are remembering your birthday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's so nice. So everyone is wishing you a happy birthday. They're Thank singing. You. I think they're singing for you. <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that oi i'm of the age where birthdays are just a you know it's just a day oh, <laughs> say. oh natter's place can i suggest mandy and all of us sing happy birthday to Sue's? trust me my my singing in short spans is good no one wants to hear that in a full-on song no. <laughs> <laughs> uh no 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 uh yes so oh. Macau is great. And a lot of people, thank you everybody for your, your birthday wishes. I appreciate that. I um, see uh, Ian O'Toole's in the chat. Who's that? Hmm. Never heard of him. I wonder. No idea. Hmm. No clue. <laughs> Hi, Ian. It's nice to see you yes, there. Hello, hello. Ian O'Toole, game designer, fabulous artist. Done a little bit of art on what? Like Lisboa. Lisboa. <laughs> <laughs> Nemo's War, which yes. I think is an underappreciated work of Ian O'Toole's. Thank you very much. Beautiful Actually, that, one too. that artwork almost convinced me to back that game, even though it was like solo play. And I'm like, no, I'm not going right? to play it. But the art was so nice. Oh, yeah. and Jeff is asking, have you started on your top 10 space games? Oh, <laughs> how so could you do this? <laughs> I could... love it. Look what you are starting. You are starting things. People are going to be angry at me if I now don't do something like this. <laughs> Troublemakers. Oh, this is great. Uh, Trevin's asking, what holidays do I add to my calendar? And Mandy, you haven't backed the calendar yet, right? I haven't, sorry? You haven't backed that the gaming calendar before? No, I haven't. I have like I need to because I don't have it starred, and then of course something else. You know, yeah. my attention is back. You copy because oh, somewhere, but no, I actually. Know. You know what? If it comes, is it on now or no, is no, it no, coming? no? Okay. I'll just have to. I'll I'll help you out because you deserve one. But um, yeah, but the holidays I add just to be clear, I make sure that every quarter there is a French fries and pie day on my calendar, <laughs> and I'm not joking. I literally have pie days identified on my official calendar it's very important to me well it's good see i'm i'm still uh, this all this talk about pie you are all just ew, it's lent for me so <gasps> no sweets until <laughs> easter <laughs> so i'm like my stomach's like pie. i'm so sorry <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. No. uh let's see here um i just oh my good gravy where'd all the the questions go there was a chat and it just <laughs> Y'all birthday stuff. Hold on. I know it's so I'm sweet. Scroll back up because I know we've missed some things it's here. Totally gone. I, I had it. I was gonna ask. Oh, Chris Rowan is saying um Stranger Things board game, which of course is cool. Uh, but if you're interested in Stranger Things, it's not an officially themed board game, but you should check out In Between from Board and Dice, I think. Um, I'm going to go to BGG here real quickly because it is a two player game in between and it, it has thematically, it's like one, one player plays the under, like the, the secret world and the other player plays the kind of the town world. Um, yeah, it's board and dice. Uh, and it really plays up that unofficial. It's not the stranger things game, but thematically it totally, totally feels like stranger things game. So if you're interested in stranger things, you should check out in between from boards and dice. Um, I totally realized we're chatting along here. Uh, hello. We had some games we wanted to talk about. Oh, game schmames. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Hold on though. Like I, I, I'm going to be quick. I'm going to be like two minutes. Hold on. Hold the phone. And Daniel oh. Cheston is now apparently going to compete with me for a K-list limited edition. Daniel, don't take me on. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I will cut you for that game. <laughs> not really. Wow. I know. I, okay. I, I maybe I can cut it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you showing? Civilization. Nice little lightweight. Yes. Game. So I have been playing. So Jeff, don't worry. This is one I'll talk about on the podcast as well, but I briefly wanted to show it. So sorry, it's all shiny with my light. So Civilization, A New Dawn. This, I had never played a Civilization game. I know this is not a true Civilization game, 
but I enjoyed it. I've been teaching it to people. I've played it now with two people, with four people, which is the highest player count. Um, and I've really liked it. I really like the card mechanism where you get to shift the cards to take your action. So basically, if you take something in slot five, moves down to slot one, and then you have to build it back up again. Um, I'm not usually one for a lot of combat, but I feel in this game it's kind of necessary. And I like it. Like, it's not overly aggressive. I mean, you see it coming, and it's like, well, you know that it's going to happen. So you do have ways to cut, to prevent it from happening. But I like the interaction. I It's playable with two and it's fine, but I think I prefer it with more players. You just get more of that heavy interaction with the game. So I know people had asked me if it's comparable to the computer version. I had never played the computer version, but someone else had said uh, that it is very similar. They've, they've played the computer version and they said that they found a lot of elements quite similar. So Civilization of New Dawn from Fantasy Flight, I like it. That's awesome. I, don't know. I, I have not, and I don't know if I have a lot of interest in playing it. I am actually interested in the new battle mechanic, which, which is interesting because a few people that are Civ fans I've talked to are not fans of it, but they really love right. the original, um, where I have no connection with the original, and I'm, I'm intrigued by the updates, but... I'll be honest with you. It's not top of my list right now. But you it's nice what? to hear your point of view on it. It wasn't either. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. Check it out. And I liked it. I mean, for someone who's like me, just dipping their feet in and seeing how it plays, I thought it was good. It did what it was supposed to do. Taught me some basics. And then, you know, in the event I'm ready for a really large Civ game, you know, I'll have a little idea of what potentially could happen. So, yeah, that's what, great. What about you? I I mean I I've I've been actually getting a ton of games played lately. Uh so it's hard to say I played Bizanz, which oh, you mean this game right here? Oh shut the front door. <laughs> Not planned. Were you gonna talk about it? I don't wanna steal no, your No, I was, but you know, talk about it because we can, you know, we can kiki. What's kiki? kiki? Let's have a kiki. What's a kiki? Like a little chat? I, I don't think you're speaking the same language that I speak right now. Is that a thing? Is that a Canadian thing or is that a Mandy thing? No, let us have a conversation about this. Okay. Right so Bizance, a, a game that's been uh, released to the wider world through Renegade Games. Of course, Renegade is, first of all, cranking out a ton of games. It's hard to keep up. But thankfully, it's a ton of good games, which also makes it hard to keep up. But um, uh. It's, uh, I mean, it's a, a, an, a bidding and set collection game, essentially, with a little bit of action, and you're collecting these goods cards, and then you trade them in, and um, it's, uh, I'm, that was super great game description, I know, <laughs> so you're welcome. I got right. it, I got it. <laughs> right, well, nobody else does. It's got this thing where you're dealt a hand of cards, and then cards are laid out in a market, and then you use the cards in your hand to bid on them mm -hmm. and then some cards go into your hold and some go back into this other marketplace and then when the auctions are all done whoever came in last gets to pick first from that other marketplace and it's a really nice balancing mechanism so even if you lost out on the auction you get an advantage in the kind of open market thing and that really that really does a nice thing for the game it's it's very very quick to play the rounds and turns feel very snappy to me um the art is fine it doesn't you know blow my hair up or anything like that but i it it was just fine but you know for a quick interactive engaging game with a little bit of auction a little bit of set collection i really liked it it was it was nice I did, yeah, we've, we played it uh the other night with a larger group and i played initially before that with two others so i played it at three and we played it at so I think six is the highest play count. Definitely plays better with higher player counts, in my opinion. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. But no, I thought the same as you. It's fairly straightforward. Someone asked if it's like Medici. Um, and I don't know if they mean, I'm assuming they mean like Medici, the card game. No, I, I think they mean Medici, the actual, the actual, Medici? The actual I'm auction game. I'm trying to game. remember. It's much, it's, it's lighter. Uh, yeah. It feels different. Um, oh, shoot. It's been so long since I played Medici. Yeah, the last game I played was Medici, Isn't the card Me game. Is but... Medici a once around auction? I also think of it as the card game where you each take turns taking cards from the row. Oh, yeah, but that's more of a push your luck thing. I well, don't know. This is it, and I feel like it's not the same. Mm -hmm. either. It's been a long time since I played it. Let's put it this way. It didn't make me, it didn't make me think of Medici when I no, played it. So. No, exactly. Same as me. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we had fun with it for what it was. It's like game. We had some couple, a couple things that came up where somebody didn't have cards to bid with at the beginning of their turn, and um, 
that had not happened in a previous game, but I'm like, well, I guess they didn't manage their cards right. But I, I double checked and apparently that's, they would just have to wait it out until they got more cards uh, at the end of the round. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and we're almost good. Uh, a couple people just before you show um, your next game, Mandy, is, oh, and actually we're, we're running out of time. No, I know we're running out of time. <laughs> time flies. Is people are mentioning they see London, the Osprey edition, yeah. the second edition of London. Um, I think I've talked about, I think we both talked about it on the podcast. We did. We both talked. Yeah. I think you most recently talked about it. Yeah. yeah. I, mm, I love, love the new Osprey edition of London. It takes everything. And I own the first edition as well and i own and love the first edition but man if, if i had to pick i would probably just pick this new second edition from osprey games it just distills everything about the game that you love that running your city the card pile management and distills it down to just that to that pure to to what was absolutely best about london the the poverty that sounds odd the best thing about london is the poverty but the poverty management the card management the running your city all that stuff it's it's a good one and the art you know tool of course as an artist mentions the art is great and probably doesn't get a ton of of notice for it but it's delightful it's quite it's lovely understated right it has a bit of that watercolor and yeah, oh very much I think, so. and that's talking about that as well the urban sketching and watercolor and that's why people expect you know either really vibrant or something overly dramatic and this actually fits almost the somber theme i mean you're talking about poverty it fits the actual type of game that you're playing so Yep. In my opinion. There you go. But and yes, I see was it Timbo Canada? The sis scissor sisters have a song. Let's have a kiki. Huh. That I will exactly look it up. Where it's from. Good to know. I I always learn a few new things in our <laughs> Q&As. So there I you know. go. I feel our our you know, our viewers, listeners in the chat, they they get me. They understand my lingo. Thank you. Thank goodness somebody does. So quickly, because I know we're running out of time. Zombie slam. <laughs> So, what is even happening? So when I got this game, this is totally not, I'll be honest, it's not the type of game that I generally play. Like party games for me have to be of a certain a certain type of game before I play them. So this is a very short game or supposed to be a short game. So, you know, Sen Fung Lim? Yes. Yes. So this is a game that's designed with oh, Jake. Oh, really? Okay. It is. So, and I think it's published here by Mercury Games. So it it is app. It uses an app. Uh, for the game, which it kind of explains the game oh, and really? runs you through the game. So basically, you're try. It's think of like a um, oh my gosh, the name went right out of my head. The show with the zombies. Oh, e show with the zombies. Come on, Walking Dead. Thank you, Walking Dead. My goodness, <laughs> it's late. All I had was Dead of Winter. I'm like, oh, that is the game. What is the show? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> in the game, everyone's trying to as a group, you know, collectively um, stay alive and not turn into a zombie by filling your backpack with certain items. And uh, they're in the game. It's one of those games where it's a bit of speed. Like the app will tell you, okay, I'm looking for an item that is blue. And then you all have to try and get the right item. Otherwise, you're taking on, you know, straggler tokens or hazards or things that could potentially in the end, turn you into a zombie. Because at the end of, you know, I think it's four days, but you have 10 rounds within a day. You're trying to fill your backpack um, without any missing items. Otherwise, you become a zombie. The last person standing that's not a zombie with the most points will win at the end of the fourth day. I will be honest with you. When we first started playing, the rule book was intense. It's like a really so long. The game says 15 minutes. The rule book was like this thick. And I'm like, wow, it's so detailed. And for a 15 minute game, it should not take this long to go through the rule book. So this is something I've already actually mentioned to Sen when I spoke to him. I said, I can't get past the rule book. Like it's so much. Wow. So hmm. he's like, no, definitely something that, you know, and this is nice that we can have these connections. He's like, no, I totally hear what you're saying. Let's go back and take a look at it. But once we actually started playing the game, we had fun. Okay. You know, we had a good time with it. I mean, I have nails. I might've attacked a few people <laughs> trying to get <laughs> But definitely have one fun one you want to play with your kids or even just people who just want something light and fun. Like I might bring this at a lunch hour for them to try out and I think they would actually really like it. So Zombie Slam, if you can get past the rule book, I think you'll have a good time. But I'm giving you fair warning. It, it, the rule book is quite lengthy. So and I would say it actually plays closer to the 30 minute mark versus 15 minutes. It's still pretty quick, though. No, it is. It is fast. Absolutely. Have you ever played Rock, Paper, Wizard? I have. I from, and it's like from it. the same design team, right? Yes, it is. And they're coming out with an expansion. Yes, I know. I'm excited for it. I, it's the silliest, most ridiculous experience to play, but I have so much fun playing it. So there it was go. good. I remember doing some like weird. Yeah, you're casting spells. Yes. Yeah, so. with funny hand shapes. I know it was great. If anyone hasn't tried it, you really should check it out. I had a really good time, and Sen actually taught it 
to us um, at an event. And I really, really enjoyed it. We got to test out a bit of the expansion. So I like that one. Well, we are at the top of the hour. It is that magic closing time for this Q&A with Mandy and Suzanne. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. I I can't even tell you how much fun it is to chat with you and get all your questions and see all of your input in the chat. It's just one of my favorite things ever. So thank you so much for being here with us. Um, Mandy and I will be recording the next episode of The Dice Tower very, very soon. And uh, we need your questions for Q&A. So feel free if we didn't get your question in this chat. I'm sorry. It moves very quickly. It's hard for me to keep up. So before oh. we go, though, I will. I just read this quickly. And we will. Well, I'm thinking on behalf of us from Lady Cheer. Cheerlers, cheerlers. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Hi, Susan and Mandy, huge fan here from the Philippines. Can you say hello to my daughter, Anaya? And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It is a beautiful name. And her cousins, Jaira and, Dan and Dana. So hello. Hello. And thank there you, you for joining us. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so if you have questions, send them to us, Suzanne and Mandy at gmail.com. That is M A N D I. Mandy with an I at gmail.com. If we missed your question here, if you have anything else that you would be interested in hearing us answer on the podcast, send them our way. I think we have Dice Tower emails, but I can't figure out how to like log into them. Oh. So I think it's probably safer just to stick with what we know for now. For right now. Yes. And thank you, Annette. It was nice kicking with all of you too. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. All righty. <laughs> Again, great to have you here. Mandy, it was great to catch up with you, too. Yeah, it's good to see you. We haven't seen each other in a while. Great to talk. Thank you so much to all the people in the chat. You make things so wonderful for us and so much fun. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will see you back for another Q&A, hopefully in about a month. Yes, absolutely. Bye, everyone. Bye.